Okay, everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to talk about diving into the wreck. Um, people have asked about uh, Adrian Rich, and I feel like a lot has already been said about Aunt Jennifer's Tigers. So just look at the discussion boards for that. But I thought we would talk a little bit more about diving into the wreck. We'll work our way through the poem um, slowly. And then after we're done, if you still have questions, feel free to ask in the question ca uh, cafe. All right, so here we go, diving into the wreck. First, having read the book of myths and loaded the camera and checked the edge of the knife blade, I put on the body armor of black rubber, the absurd flippers, the grave and awkward mask, I am having to do this not like Cousteau with his assiduous team aboard the sun-flooded schooner, but here alone. So this is about um, someone getting ready to explore the waters, getting to going to explore the wreck, and they're doing a lot of preparing uh, ahead of time. Uh, so they're getting on their um, wetsuit, they're putting on their mask, they're getting the camera ready. Um, they're also reading the Book of Myths. So the Book of Myths is going to come up a couple times. So I want you to think about what the Book of Myths might represent. This um, poem is bookended with this reference to a Book of Myths. It's in the opening stanza and it's in the closing stanza. And we'll talk about it more as we go along. Um, pay attention to some of the word choices like absurd and awkward. And so when you, you know, when you're out of your element, which she's about to go out of her element, sometimes you feel very vulnerable and you might feel awkward. Um, Pay attention to um, what sounds like body armor, almost like a knight, like you're ready, like you're suiting up to defend yourself against something. But, um, but here we go. She's getting ready to explore uh, in the water, not like uh, Cousteau is like Jacques Cousteau. He's a very famous... Um, uh, explorer in the sea, very famous diver, and he had a whole team with him. Well, here, the speaker is going all by herself. And pay attention to the repetition of her talking about being alone, going alone. She's not with a team. She's got to do this all on her own. Okay? Next stanza. There's a ladder. The ladder is always there, hanging innocently, close to the side of the schooner. We know what it is for, we who have used it. Otherwise, it is a piece of maritime floss, some sundry equipment. So the latter, think again, look at word choice, hanging there innocently. Why that word innocently? So some people might look at it and see it as nothing more than a piece of maritime floss, but this is really, once uh, our explorer leaves the schooner, descends the ladder, and goes into the water, the explorer is in a brand new world. And so you might think of this ladder almost like a portal between worlds, or this is the way um, in which she crosses from this place of the Book of Myths to this place where of the actual wreck. Um, there's, it's almost like you're entering into a new world. And that ladder is um, what takes you down there into that new world and what brings you back. Um, so it's got some significance. I go down rung after rung and still the oxygen immerses me. Oops, sorry, the oxygen immerses me the blue light, the clear atoms of our human air. I go down, my flippers cripple me. I crawl like an insect, 
down the ladder, and there is no one to tell me when the ocean will begin. So here we get some repetition, that idea of being alone. There's no one there uh, with me to tell me when the ocean will begin. And also we got that I we have that idea once again about being vulnerable, being out of your element, almost feeling like you're an insect uh, going down the ladder. First the air is blue, and then it is bluer, and then green, and then black, I'm blacking out, and yet my mask is powerful, it pumps my blood with power. The sea is another story. The sea is not a question of power. I have to learn alone to turn my body without force in the deep element. Again, we have the repetition of alone. I have to learn alone. We also get a lot about power. My mask is powerful. It pumps my blood with power. The sea is not a question of power. So you might think about what does this poem have to do with power, um, things that empower you, things that make you feel powerless. Um, so start um, thinking about that when looking at this poem. Notice the colors. First it's blue and then green and then black. So um, you get the sense of someone who's going deeper and deeper into this other world and those, um, and those um, uh, movements uh, are conveyed through the use of color. The deeper we get, the blacker it gets. Uh, you also might think of the black as being something that is not known, right? Okay. And now, it is easy to forget what I came for among so many who have always lived here, swaying their crenellated fans between the reefs and besides, you breathe differently down here. So that idea that you breathe differently down here, it's a just a different way of being once you're down in the ocean. Um, and again, that idea of almost like you're in a new world and there are so many things that capture your attention so many differences that it's easy to forget what you came for. It's easy to get distracted. But in the next stanza, we become more focused. I came to explore the wreck. The words are purposes. The words are maps. I came to see the damage that was done and the treasures that prevail. I stroked the beam of my lamp slowly along the flank of something more permanent than fish or weed, or, yeah, or weed. Um, so here, in the previous uh, passage, you can forget what you're looking for down here. We get re-centered, refocused. I came to explore the wreck. We've had a lot of, um, we've read a lot about it in our books of myths, in our book of myths. The words kind of directed me here. They're maps. Right? They brought me to this place, but the words are not uh, something that you can use in lieu of the uh, experience or reality itself. Um, so again, she's here to explore the wreck and not the myth about the wreck, not just thinking uh, in terms of, of words, but the reality. Um, okay. keeping on going. The thing I came for, the wreck and not the story of the wreck. So that's what I was just saying. I don't want to look at what was in the book of myths. I want the reality. Uh, the wreck and not the story of wreck, the wreck, the thing itself and not the myth. So you might start thinking about a myth. What happens in a myth? A myth is a story and oftentimes in a story things are reduced to a morality tale or there's some allegory uh, and oftentimes the reality is much messier than the myth. It's a lot more complicated than the myth. Um, and so I don't just want to hear the stories that get told and retold about what happened. 
uh, I want to actually see it for myself. Um, and so here we get it, the drowned face always staring toward the sun, the evidence of damage worn by salt and sway into this thread, threadbare beauty, the ribs of the disaster curving their assertion among the tentative haunters. So here you, you're getting the, um, the evidence that uh, she's finding under the sea, uh, the ribs of the disaster, what was left behind. This is the place and I am here. The mermaid whose dark hair streams black, the merman in his armored body. We circle silently about the wreck. We dive into the hold. I am she, I am he. So here you get a lot of blurring of gender, a merman and a mermaid, male, female. You get the blurring of I, we, and you get the sense that um, when you're down here, it's almost like you lose your sense of self, almost like you can identify with um, something more universal, and that in some ways through your exploration you have be, been transformed. Um, and things go beyond male, female, I, um, I, we. Um, so you really get the sense that looking at this wreck has almost taken the speaker out of her body and she has been transformed and she can identify more universally with um, the stories um, and, the, and, um, and what it is that she is encountering. I am she, I am he whose drowned face sleeps with open eyes. You can imagine like um, a body left behind underneath the water and its eyes are open. And so here the, the, um, the one who is uh, exploring, who's diving into the wreck, is kind of identifying with um, the victims of the wreck. And there's this... Um, blurring of the lines between observer and, um, and, and those victims. So a lot of this has to do with empathy and, and understanding um, um, truths through actually experiencing it, through seeing things firsthand. Okay, I am he whose drowned face sleeps with open eyes, whose be, whose breasts still bear the stress, whose silver, copper, vermeil cargo lies obscurely inside barrels, half wedged and left to rot. We are the half destroyed instruments, the once held to a course, the water eaten log, the fouled compass. And um, down here, you know, what's left behind, a lot of it, it has been destroyed, but it's only been half destroyed and so there is still a lot of life down here that uh, can, can speak to the this diver um, but um, it's talking concretely about the wreck uh, things have been water eaten the the fouled compass the compass of course no longer works and we get here again, we are, I am, you are, by cowardice or courage, the ones who find our way back to the scene, carrying a knife, a camera, a book of myths in which our names do not appear. So you might also think um, more broadly, not just about this explorer uh, who's diving into the wreck, but think about, think about the book of myths in which people's names do not appear. What happens when someone else t 
tells your story, appropriates your story, turns your story, your reality into a myth. And I'm thinking about um, um, slaves who were encouraged to write their own stories because uh, there was a time when the only depiction uh, in print was through uh, a white perspective. And the reality and uh, of the stories were not put in print. Um, and a lot of distortions take place uh, when someone else is telling your story. You might think about um, some women. What happens when uh, to women's stories when it's only told through a male perspective? Uh, a lot of those realities get lost. And so in order to better understand those who have been victimized or marginalized or those whose lives have been lost or where there are gaps, you need to do that hands-on exploration and help salvage the dignity of victims. And you need to resurface their stories uh, in ways which allow for them to speak. Um, so it's not an easy poem, but I think it's there's a lot of uh, depth and, um, and power in this poem. So read it again. I'm hoping that this helps. But if you have any questions after you've read it again and you've listened to this, feel free to um, feel free to ask. And um, so that's about it. Okay. And I think I'm going to um, end this discussion now. But again, if you have questions, ask me anytime. Okay. Take care, everybody.